Hello everyone. Welcome to Power Electronics lecture series. In today's video, we will be looking at power MOSFET. We will basically be starting off with the symbol and structure of power MOSFET and compare it with a normal MOSFET. We will also be looking at the characteristics of power MOSFET. So let's get started. So at the first place, MOSFET stands for Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor. You see the word transistor used and it is quite an indication that it belongs to the family of transistor and it is a fully controlled device. We have already seen that in the classification, isn't it? What does power MOSFET means compared to a normal MOSFET? It has higher power handling capability up to megawatt range. So this is also discussed in our previous videos. Now, in order to understand how power MOSFET works, let us go step by step, starting off from the symbol. So when we look at the symbol, just like BJT, like NPN configuration and PNP configuration, we have N channel and P channel. And again, this is based on the direction in which the arrowhead is indicated. That is the difference in the symbol. You have three different terminals compared to a BJT. You have gate, drain, and source. And in BJT, you had base collector and emitter isn't it so the main difference here in mosfet is that it is a unipolar device that means the conduction is only due to the majority charge carriers how is that possible and all those things i will be explaining by looking at the structure basically you need to understand one concept here the device is actually controlled with the help of a gate terminal over there in BJT we controlled it with the help of a base terminal isn't it so this is a voltage control device and this is a current control device BJT is a current control device and MOSFET is a voltage control device all of these will be clear as why is it a voltage control device or why is it uh, a unipolar device so these are some questions that will be there in your mind as in when you watch the video you will be able to understand those concepts so at the first place one important thing that we will be considering is we will only be considering n channel configuration just for understanding purpose it will be the same almost with respect to p channel configuration so just like the way that we did for bjt we will be starting off our analysis so when we talk about structure, we have to first talk about the structure of a basic MOSFET or you can also refer to it as a normal MOSFET. So only if you understand the structure, then you will be able to correlate with what is the difference in a power MOSFET. So the structure of normal MOSFET is as follows. And there are two different types of MOSFET. You have depletion type of MOSFET and enhancement MOSFET. So enhancement is popularly used uh, because of several advantages which we don't want to go in detail now over here but just remember one point that this is an enhancement configuration as it has several advantages in comparison with a depletion type of a MOSFET now if you carefully observe as I mentioned there are three terminals of a MOSFET you have source you have drain and you have gate and I also mentioned with the help of gate terminal we will be able to control this device so in addition to this if you carefully observe you also have a metal oxide over here and what this metal oxide does basically this is sio2 so what this layer does is that it acts as a capacitor the working principle i hope of a capacitor is known to you and through the process you will understand why this pro this particular metal oxide plays a very important role in the entire working of a mosfet you have a p type material and on top of that you have two n plus material and plus indicates that it is heavily doped minus indicates that it is lightly doped and if you don't have any symbol that means it is moderately doped now let us understand the working let me un initially assume that bgs is equal to zero i am not giving any gate supply at this point in time what happens to the analysis or the working of this particular mosfet so when there is no gate pulse given 
and if you carefully observe vdd is connected let me assume vdd is connected and positive is given to n plus negative is given to n plus over here for the source terminal that means this layer that is n plus over here will be forward biased because it is connected to negative terminal and this will be reversed biased basically now there will be no conduction taking place because one of the layers over here is reversed biased isn't it you might ask me a question what will happen if we reverse this particular polarity vdd if it is plus and then minus in that case also there will be no difference because this will be forward biased then and the other layer will be reversed biased so still we have one region which is reversed biased and this will act as a blockage for the charge carriers to move and as a result we will not have the device into conduction state what am i trying to say without a gate supply you will not be able to turn on a mosfet as simple as that now let me consider another example or a scenario where i will be supplying some amount of gate supply vgs is supplied let us say there is some value of vgs so equal to 1 volt or 2 volt depending upon the threshold voltage you have to supply but let me assume it is 2 volt now what happens because of it is as i mentioned it acts as a capacitor positive polarity gets accumulated on the upper plate over here and negative charges gets accumulated on the lower plate in this particular fashion so now what happens although this is connected to this region and it is reversed biased and this is forward biased but since negative charges are here and what happens is that it allows the flow of charge carriers so when i talk about charge carriers the charges will start flowing or the electrons will start flowing from the source to the drain as there is a path now from source to the drain previously we did not have any path for the movement of the charge carriers isn't it now we have electrons or the negative ions which will be responsible for the migration of electrons from the source to the drain terminal as a result the conventional current direction will be in the opposite direction that is from the drain to the source very very important observation now you might ask me a question as what is the role of p type material over here we have only talking about n plus with respect to source and n plus with respect to drain and we have not spoken anything with respect to p type till now isn't it so let me assume now i will be increasing this gate supply from 2 volt to say equal to 3 or 4 or 5 volt and what happens more will be the charge carriers accumulated over here isn't it so as a result due to polarization effect more will be the negative amount of charges appearing at the other end of the plate so these charges in order to accumulate this or in order to recombine with the majority charge carriers of the p-type material we need a p-type material isn't it if you don't have any material then these charges will not be accumulated throughout the surface so that is the reason why we need a p-type material i hope this point is also clear so with the help of gate supply we are able to turn off the turn on the device and without the gate supply the device will not turn on two important observation and we have seen how is it with respect to a normal mosfet i hope this point is clear till now now what we will be doing is we will be carrying out our analysis with a power mosfet and how is the structural difference when compared to a normal mosfet we are still considering normal mosfet just to compare and the first and foremost important thing with respect to a normal mosfet is i have indicated it in a very larger manner and there is a purpose for it not to show you in a much better visibility but there is a purpose for this because if you carefully observe the normal mosfet as i mentioned will be usually designed for 15 volt or 5 volt or 10 volt and it will be carrying maximum up to 1 amperes usually it will be in micro amperes and milli amperes but power mosfets are to be designed for kilo amperes and have to have the ability to carry the power of up to megawatts so in order to do that more will, more will be the current carrying capability isn't it in order to achieve that we need a larger cross-sectional area 
and that is why it is indicated in this particular fashion and now we have n plus material and on top of that we have n minus which is called as the drift region and we have p type material which is called as the body region and then we have n plus material over here and we will be basically completing the structure in this particular fashion now you might ask me a question like comparing the difference you don't see a drift region over here in the normal mosfet and you see a drift region over here very important thing that you have to remember is drift region is usually useful for improving the reverse blocking voltage capacity so this is already explained and it is the same concept that was explained in the power diodes and bjt's so if you have consistently followed my videos by now you would have understood drift region is definitely necessary and power mosfet definitely requires a drift region and it is lightly doped so apart from that if you carefully observe we have n plus here n plus here n plus here n plus here and you might have a question why is it so much uh, required so much layers are required in this particular uh, structure so one important thing that i have not mentioned till now is when we say power mosfet it does not mean only one mosfet it means a lot of mosfets are connected in parallel in order to increase the current handling capacity so let me assume half of this stands for one mosfet and the other half stands for the other mosfet so that is the reason why you see n plus here some half of the n plus layer as it will be an elongated one and there will be a lot of mosfets connected just to understand the working let us categorically separate this into two halves this stands for one mosfet and this stands for other mosfet we have p type material over here we call this as a body region and it is useful for one purpose and that will be during blocking condition so i will explain that later so apart from that remaining concepts are the same you have metal oxide over here and you have metal oxide over here again and now how do we understand this particular working so let me assume i am giving some amount of gate supply through the gate terminal so let me assume there is a gate terminal over here and i will be giving some amount of supply with respect to source what happens positive charges will be induced in the upper plate isn't it basically this again acts as a capacitor so once that is done simultaneously negative amount of charge carriers will be accumulated on the other end of the plate isn't it now we have to give vds as well so i will be connecting drain with respect to source over here now what will happen is that you see negative is connected to the n plus region and this region will be forward biased isn't it because n plus is connected to the negative terminal and consequently what happens p body and p type material will be connected to negative terminal and this body region will be reversed biased this will basically be blocking so that is why it is called as the body region apart from that now if you carefully observe since the charges are there between these two regions because of the gate supply what happens the current starts flowing through this path it will not go through the body layer it will going it will be going through this direction so the body region does not allow for the flow of current through this path as it is under reversed bias condition i hope this point is clear so the current basically flows from the drain to the source in this particular fashion so now you would have understood why gate supply is very very important isn't it and without the gate supply there will be no charge carriers and it will act as a perfect insulator so that is the reason why during no gate supply it it will not conduct you will not have the minority charge carriers flowing but in bjt we had the conduction due to minority charge carriers isn't it but over here even if you remove the gate supply you will not have the conduction of minority charge carriers because this is basically blocking the entire process of operation and that is why this is a unipolar device and we are with the help of gate supply we are basically giving suitable amount of voltage and we are able to control this particular operation and hence it is a voltage control device 
i hope these points are clear apart from that if you carefully observe you have n plus p and then n over here you might have an internal bjt effect so this will be eliminated with the help of body source shot so the body region over here and the source region will be shorted and that in turn will actually nullify the effect of this particular transistor basically we don't want it to operate as a bjt and that is why we want a mosfet isn't it and even in spite of it if we have an effect of bjt then that is not at all desirable and that is why we will be going for body source shot i hope this point is clear till now and you are able to understand what power mosfet structure and working is all about now we will be looking at the characteristics so at the first place we will be looking at the output characteristics and it is a plot of vds versus id now vds is basically the output voltage id is basically the output current and the characteristics between output voltage and output current is called as a output characteristics now you might see something called as cutoff region active region ohmic region whereas in transistor you had seen something called as cutoff region active region and saturation region isn't it the characteristics is almost similar to that of a normal bjt or a power bjt and you have to only change some of the things over here in analysis point of view whenever there was no gate supply obviously the device will not turn on and that corresponding mode is called as cutoff region and it is indicated over here as in when slowly you increase the value of bgs what happens the current slowly starts increasing in this particular fashion and it gets saturated up to some extent again it will increase for different value of vgs2 again id will increase for vgs3 again it will increase for vgs4 it will be almost constant and when it is almost constant that means it is operating in active region so active region is basically used for amplification purpose and throughout our analysis of power electronic circuits we will never focus on active region so you don't have to worry about this region at all the next region is basically the ohmic region if you carefully observe there is a point till the current is sharply increasing isn't it so that is just plotted to highlight what belongs to the ohmic region so under ohmic region basically the device is in on state and it is in conduction state it is just like the saturation region in case of a bjt nothing else now you have something called as bvsus this is the maximum breakdown voltage that you can apply and this is one of the most important parameter that you have to remember now having seen the output characteristics and one more observation is that vgs5 is greater than vgs4 is greater than vgs2 vgs1 so that is something that is already known so just for uh, you to understand i have just represented it over here now what is the transfer characteristics so transfer characteristics is basically the plot of output current with respect to input voltage for different values or for constant values of vds so for different values in the sense what i was trying to say is you can have multiple values of vds however vds must be constant so for example id versus vgs you have calculated for one specific value of vds maybe if we consider it as 3 volt for this particular value of vds what is the variation of id versus vgs and again if you do it for 5 volt you will get another curve like this again if you do for 7 volt you will get another curve like this so basically this is nothing but the transfer characteristics i hope this point is clear so we have seen the structure we have seen the symbol we have seen the characteristics till now one of the most important things that we have to remember is the advantage of using a power mosfet isn't it it is used in high frequency applications very very important point why is it used in high frequency applications because i told when it is actually reverse biased or when you are not giving gate supply what happens there will be no flow of current due to the minority charge carriers in mosfet isn't it it is a unipolar device when that is the case 
then the reverse recovery time will be very very less isn't it so we have seen what reverse recovery time is in bjt so the concept is quite similar so reverse recovery time is very very less and when the reverse recovery time is less obviously the frequency of operation will be much faster and that is why it is used in high frequency application i hope this uh, point is clear in case you have any questions with respect to this lecture series please feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below please do give your valuable feedback as it will really be helpful for me to improvise and give my best thanks for watching please do keep supporting thank you